Hey guys, this is Anthony Morganti from AnthonyMorganti.com. In this video, I'm going to talk about my top five hidden tricks in Lightroom that I use all the time. We're going to jump right into it with hidden trick number one. Did you know that you could draw a perfectly straight line with either the spot removal tool or the brush tool? To demonstrate, I'm going to use this image. It has some contrails in it. And let's say I just want to remove this one contrail here. So I'm going to use the spot removal tool. And typically you could just click and draw along that straight line that is the contrail and it would be removed. But a quicker way, at least in many cases it's quicker, is you could go to one extreme end of this line you want to remove and click once. Now when you do that, you know, it's, see it took a sample over here. Don't worry about that. Just ignore it. Go to the other extreme end now and hold the shift key in and click a second time. And you could see it realigned and drew this straight line and removed that straight line contrail in the image. Now this would come in really handy if you have a power line in the image. You could click once at the beginning of that image or beginning of that power line, then go to the other extreme end of the power line and hold the shift key in and click a second time and it's gone. So it's really a very quick way to get rid of anything that's straight in the image. Uh, similarly for the brush tool, if you find the need that you have to draw a perfectly straight line on an image, you could go to the beginning where you want the line to begin and click once, go to the other end, hold the shift key in and click a second time and you'll get a perfectly straight line. So I use that trick quite often. All right, hidden trick number two. Were you ever working in the basic panel and you found that you maxed out a slider but you needed to go further? In the case of this image, I have the basic panel adjusted, but the shadows for me, let's just say for the sake of argument, are a little too dark and I want to open those shadows up a bit more. Now there's a few different ways you could go about it, but one way I often use and that works very well is using a graduated filter, but not in the way the graduated filter is usually used. Now we'll open the graduated filter and I'm going to reset everything right now to zero. And typically you would just go somewhere in the image and either, you know, drag the filter down or drag it up. When you want to use this little trick, you're going to use it in a very unorthodox way. Go to any of the corners of the image. It doesn't matter. In this case, I'm going to go to the lower right hand corner. And you can see I'm going to go as close to the corner as I could get, but still be on the image. Now I'm going to click once with my left mouse button and I'm just going to drag off the image. So I'm dragging it to my lower right away from the image. Now, obviously, I don't have any of the sliders move, so you're not seeing anything. But I'm going to turn on the overlay by hitting the O key on the keyboard. And you can see that the overlay is indicating that my graduated filter is pretty much affecting the entire image evenly and equally. And to better demonstrate that, I'll turn off this overlay and I'm going to take the exposure slider and I'll just move it down. And you can see that it's affecting everything in the image. So in this case I want to open up shadows a little more and I'm going to push my shadows to the right. Now one thing the shadows and highlights adjustment when you use this little trick don't work as great or they don't have as much of a swing as they do in the basic panel. The basic panel they seem to affect the shadows at a you know greater rate but you can see there is a difference. And now what you could do, you could double it up. So you could go down on this little button, right click on it, and then click on duplicate. So I doubled it up. Now I'll do a before and after. There's before the graduated filter and after the graduated filter. So for the case of this image, I wanted to open those shadows up just a little more and that little trick allowed me to do it. All right, we're gonna jump right into hidden trick number three. Now this involves any of the local adjustments that is the graduated filter radial filter or brush and for this image I'm going to use the graduated filter and I'm just going to draw it on the sky so I want this graduated filter on the sky I have all the 
uh, sliders at zero. But I'm just going to really kind of mess up the image. Let's, for the sake of argument, I'm just going to move them a lot of the sliders around. All right, just to to make a point. I'll turn that one down. Oh, sharpness. Okay, so I was up very late and I adjusted this image and I thought it looked great. But the next day I come and I look at it with my rested eyes and I say, wow, that gradient filter is much too strong. I need to lessen the effect of that filter. Well, I could come in here and just move all of these sliders down to try to reduce that effect. Another thing you could do, and what I do all the time, is if you hover over this little button here, you'll see that the cursor turns into that little hand. Now, leaving that cursor there, if I hold the Alt or Option key, that's Alt if you have a PC, Option if you have a Mac, you'll see that the hand turned into this little line with two arrows. That's called a scrubby slider. And what that is indicating that you should slide it either to the right or to the left. And you should hold in the left mouse button while you do it. And what will happen is all of these uh, sliders will move together uh, proportional, proportional to each other. So I'm going to hold that Alter Option key. I'm going to click the left mouse button. Now I want to lessen the effect, so I'm going to move it to the left. And if you look at the sliders on the right-hand side of my screen while I do that, you can see they're all moving in towards the center. Now for the sake of argument, I'm going to push it to the right. And you can see how they're all moving out. And they're moving proportional to one another. So this is, in a, way, this is a way you could kind of like have a volume key on any of these local adjustments. Again, that's a graduated filter, radio filter or brush. Now another way you could do this, if you prefer, if you look right here in the top right hand corner of the tool, there's a little black triangle. That's called an expose triangle. I'm going to click on that and you can see there's an amount and a slider called a mount. That's the same exact thing. It does the same exact thing. So you could use either way that works best for you. Generally speaking, I prefer to just use this alt slash option key trick because for me it seems to be faster and more natural uh, and you know I don't have to come over here click this triangle adjust it then click the triangle to open everything back up now that is again for you know the third time it's in all three of these tools and you can see it's there on the radio filter and it's there on the brush so get in the habit of doing that you'll find that it works really really well okay hidden trick Number four. Now, actually, I'm kind of surprised that more people don't know about this trick because it was introduced, I think, in Lightroom 5.4. And with some fanfare, a lot of people welcomed this little trick and this little addition to Lightroom. And again, it involves those local adjustment tools, either that graduated filter, radio filter, or brush. And again, for the demonstration, I'm going to use the graduated filter and I'm going to affect the sky again. So I'm going to draw this down. I'm going to darken it a little bit, like crazy amount. All right, so I'm going to overdo it, obviously. So you don't have to send me hate mail saying you hate how I adjusted everything. But I'm just overdoing it kind of on purpose to show you why. Now that graduated filter affected the sky like I wanted it to, but it also affected the building or the building. Did you know that there's a brush tool here that you could erase this effect from the building right here if you see mask it says new edit brush now the newest version of Lightroom Lightroom classic CC has masking tools in it as well a lot of you aren't using Lightroom classic CC and have no plans of switching out from Lightroom 6 or 5 and you're going to be using this tool a lot so you're going to click on this brush tool right here and then you're going to go down here. We have three brushes, A, B, and Erase. You're going to use the Erase brush. You're not going to want to touch any of the settings. Leave those alone. And you could come in here now and you could erase the effect from the building. Now I'm going to turn on the overlay by hitting the O key. And you can see the overlay is showing where the graduated filter is applied. And it's, you could see that it's on the building. So I could erase it now 
from the building. Now that other Lightroom trick I showed you where you hold the shift key in works here as well. So I could, let's say, take feathering down and I could come in here right on the edge. I could um, hold or I could click once there, then come down here and hold that shift key in and draw a perfectly straight line. You could do it there and hold that shift key in and draw that perfectly straight line. So that will help you go across these edges without um, getting into the sky. So I could click once there, hold that shift key in, click there, keep that shift key clicked in, click there, keep that shift key in. I could get a smaller brush too, that would help. Shift key in, click there, shift key in, click there. So I could get all around the outside very well or very easily uh, holding that shift key trick that I taught you. And I'm not going to do the whole thing, but I could come in here and I could erase the effect from the building where I don't want it. And then when I'm done, I could turn that overlay off by either clicking right there, turning that checkbox, or hit the O key on the keyboard. So that is hidden trick number four. And finally, hidden trick number five that I use all the time. This has to do with split toning. And I don't use split toning a lot, but sometimes I like to use it to give my images kind of that old film look, like it was an old film camera. And what I do is I would, let's say, go to the highlights first, and I want to add a, a tinge, a color tinge to the highlight. Well, if you hold that Alter Option key in while you adjust Hue, that's Alt if you have a PC, Option if you have a Mac, it'll max out the saturation slider temporarily, even though it doesn't show it being maxed out. As you can see, it's maxed out. So I could move this to really get an idea where I want the highlights to be. Okay, so I want them right in there. Then I could come in with the saturation slider and just add the, the true amount of saturation I want to add. Similarly for shadows, I again will hold that Alt or Option key in. Again, that's Alt if you have a PC. Option if you have a Mac. Click with my left mouse button on that slider. And then I could get what the, the, the color shading I want for the shadows. And then I could come to Saturation Slider and add that appropriate amount. And I could readjust as needed. So then I could get this kind of old film look. And that's what I use a lot when I use split toning. I do that Alt to Option key trick to maximize temporarily saturation so I could get a better look at what I'm going to be doing, what I'm going to end up with with the image. So that's it for this video. Those of you that have not watched my videos in the past, I mentioned at the beginning, my name is Anthony Morganti. I have a website, anthonymorganti.com. And on my YouTube channel, I have well over, currently, well over 600 videos. So check out my website. All my videos are free. They're always free. And they're supported by people like you that purchase my Lightroom presets or my Photoshop actions or make donations to me or use my affiliate link. So thank you everyone that has done that, that supports what I'm trying to do. That is offer free photography education. Thank you everyone. I'll talk to you guys soon.